So today, Goddess of Love and Perfume. I'm multitasking a bit here. Uh, that's the Goddess filtering. Uh, so if you hear a tinkly noise in the background, it's okay. It's just the liquid going into the bottle. Goddess of Love and Perfume. Now, this is the last perfume in the series of Crimes of Passion. Goddess came from lots of different ideas. I had this plan at one point to make her from 100% synthetics because I thought that would be an amusing intellectual exercise. That if you could make the most beautiful perfume only from synthetics, absolutely convinced that people would smell it and go, oh, that's so lovely and natural. Um, but in the end, I sort of forgot about that idea and decided to do something different. What I really wanted was for this perfume to be something which Aphrodite could have used to descend from Mount Olympus down to the North Yorkshire Moors to seduce beautiful shepherd boys. Slightly um, mixing my metaphors and my history there, but there is this hill just south of Middlesbrough which looks as if it's had a bite taken out of it. It's called Rosebury Topping. And for a long time I've had an idea in my head that uh, a, a perfume called Rosebury Topping would be a lovely thing, full of roses and berries. Because Le Parfum de Rosine has one called Roseberry, which meant that that was kind of off the menu. Right, more scent, okay. Not much, because it's nearly full. Um, so I can smell it while we're here. Um, sorry, you can't. It's really nice. Um, so, uh, Roseberry Topping was a place where we used to go for picnics when I was very small. It was one of my grandmother's favourite places. And if you ever said, well, shall we have a day out? What should we do? My grandma would go, ooh, Roseberry Topping. And up we'd go with a picnic, cucumber sandwiches, a lot, orange squash, homemade cakes. Uh, and all I remember are lovely summer days up there, though I'm sure there were days where we really didn't want to go because it was freezing. Another influence was when I went to the Osmotech for the first time and I smelt this creation, the Paul Poiret fragrance called Fruit Défendu, which I misunderstood, knowing a bit of French. I thought it meant melty fruits, fruits from the fondue, not forbidden fruits, which I realised later if I'd listened, well, if I'd seen it written down, it wouldn't have been Fruit Défendu, it would have been Fruit Défendu, which is, of course, completely different. So, um, but it's forbidden fruit. And this perfume was from the 1920s. And I thought, how could they make something so magnificent, so modern feeling then? I thought perfumes from then smelt just floral, but it's very, very fruity. And I thought maybe I could do something, a modern equivalent, nearly 100 years later, of something that gorgeous. So, out comes the, the Besseby book again, because... I can never remember what I put in my perfumes. It'd be great if anybody kidnapped me and tried to get it out of me. No chance, not without the book. But I know what I'm, well, I know what I'm after at the time. Oh, there's a door. I have to go let Nick in. Hold on. And we're back. Now, it had to be a sheep. I wanted uh, the ultimate in fruity sheepers. So, um, I went with oak moss and bergamot, of course. Uh, did I put... A poponax in it, I use, yes, and a poponax, which is uh, something that I always put in my sheepers. So, um, well, I had a tiny, tiny bit left of an Evonic peach CO2 extract. Uh, they aren't making any more, so I can't have any more, which is a real shame, but I used that up. I also used real yuzu essential oil. Uh, yuzu is ridiculously expensive. Um, uh, the citrus fruit for citruses because it's grown in Japan and processed there, shipped over here. 
uh, and you get a yuzu accord without using yuzu, but I wanted to use yuzu, so I did use yuzu. Um, then we're on to these really lovely uh, new materials I got hold of. Thank you, crowdfunders from Manfrère. These are black currant and wild strawberry nat pops, they're called, which are actually natural. It's just that I don't think any strawberries were harmed in their creation. Maybe black currants. Uh, cassis absolute as well, so that is black currant. That is natural. Um, I put some cocoa absolute in, some dark patchouli, a good old raspberry leaf absolute, um, cigadols, the uh, aldehyde C14, which is the peachy lactone. This is not an aldehyde, we've covered this, but it's a lactone. Uh, vanillin, uh, pentadecalactone, some rose absolute, benzyl. Well, my chemistry teachers used to say salicylate. I've heard it pronounced salicylate, but it's anyways, benzyl, salicylate. Mmm, it's a lovely floral thing. It comes from flowers, it just this didn't. Um, Hydroxy citronella, which is your um, lily of the valley. And some uh, apricot liquid CO2 extract. This is all the new interesting naturals which are beginning to appear and then they disappear again because you can't get consistency. Uh, rose geranium and methyl ionone alpha for the violety thing which I always put in there. There you go. Of course getting them in the right order is a whole other thing but that's what I used to make it. So you have flowers, you have fruits, you have a sheep heart in there somewhere, sweetness and loveliness. And oh, this is what I'm wearing at the moment. I never thought I'd knock Aurora's Tokyo Cafe, now known as Tokyo Spring Blossom, off my top slot. I think I've done it. I feel like after these crimes of passion, I can probably retire happily. But I'm not going to because I'm not quite finished. But um, there you go. That is the story of the goddess of love and perfume. For Aphrodite, next time she wants to descend to the York North Yorkshire hills and uh, seduce beautiful shepherd boys, if she can find any. Thank you. Done. <laughs>